Every coffee needs a lotus. And welcome back to our webinar with none other than Sir Eric Riego de Dios on transformations through growth mindset, learning and thriving through challenges. And this is the second part where we get to read the, the slide about helping our Kababayans during COVID-19 pandemic. Support our frontliners. It started in April. This is the third month that we're offering free sessions, learning sessions. And this could have not been possible without the cooperation of our dear experts from all parts of the world. And today, Sir Eric Viego de Dios, thank you for saying yes to this project, to this partnership. It's always a privilege and an honor, Howell. Thank you. And this is the call of the moment. So as we give back to our clients and as we pay forward to those who just signed up and this was their first time to get to know Arriva Academy. We're giving you a platform to help other people out. Those who haven't done anything to you, anything good and who are incapable of paying you back. So as you gain access to all our live webinar series for a cause, you may donate an amount to help families in distress. So here's the link at the chat box. Act now, click and donate. 100 pesos or so. If you have a million, why not? So it is in partnership with Arriva Achievers Foundation, Bayanihan Act 2020, or the coming together of heroes, and of course, for the Bayanam Mahalinay. So Sir Eric, uh, are you ready now I, for I the Q&A? Have, I have the growth mindset to be ready. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have that too. But sir, let's just read the people from different parts of... Oh, let's read the places where our participants are from in the Philippines. Baguio, Batanes, Bulacan, Cagayan de Oro, Cavite, Cebu, Davao, Dumaguete, uh, General Santos City, Iligan, Iloilo, Benguet, Laguna, Nueva Ecija, Pampanga, Quezon Province, Rizal, Tabaco, and of course, NCR. Thank you so much for joining us. So, Sir Eric, uh, I'd like to read uh, a comment from Joanna Dizon. Before I forget, here are the mechanics, by the way. If you're from the Zoom room, Please type in your question, not at the chat box, but at the Q&A box. And you may also want to do the live Q&A. So press, the, press that button. We want you to press the raise hand button. And for our YouTube live viewers, type in your questions. Our technical team is monitoring your comments. So from uh, Joanna Dizon as a leader, how can you help 
a direct report who is exhibiting a fixed mindset. On the other side, how do you deal with your boss who has a fixed mindset? So um, it, a mindset is something that the person, it's, it's very personal. And the transformation also happens at the personal perspective. Um, so the best thing that you could do is hopefully to demonstrate the growth mindset through your own behavior. Mm. And hopefully that will also permeate, especially if you now have uh, the, your, your, your direct subordinates would have the privilege of actually modeling, observing you. Because whether you teach them or not, doing is actually the way that they will model you when they see you mm. do that. And, and you know, growth mindset begets growth mindset. When you set up a meeting, for example, focusing on the behaviors of people instead of labeling them, it becomes a more conducive and inclusive environment for everyone to thrive. So for example, um, and, and I'm sure many of the organizations are already doing this, we operate not not by labeling people, but you operate by focusing on SBI. So S stands for the situation. What mm. is the situation? What is the behavior elicited? Mm. B stands for behavior. And what is the I, the impact? So situation, behavior, impact. That's In right. a way, you focus on what was observed, what, what is the action, mm. rather than labeling or mm. putting a person in a box. Um, so maybe by a, approaching it in that way and coaching your people in that way and also explaining to your supervisor in that way, they will get the drift of that growth mindset. And hopefully that will permeate across because you cannot necessarily impose that. Uh, otherwise, some organizations actually institutionalize that and place that under uh, their leadership development program. So there will be more awareness. So again, this is really more awareness, but the actual adoption and the actual display of behavior would really depend on the people. Because theoretically, how will I know that most of us will be on the same page? But once we're out there on the floor in the operations, mm -hmm. the tendency is to revert to where our status quo was. So it's really, it's really necessary for us to always be mindful. That's why emotional intelligence and self-awareness is the buzz right now because mm -hmm. it's important uh, for us to really transform ourselves because without, without policing ourselves, we will always regress to where we used to be. And you know, it's progress, it's not perfection. So we we'll just take it a day at a time and a step at a time. Thank you, Sir Eric. Now we have teachers who are viewing us and watching us right now via YouTube live stream. Aisha Aguined, Ma'am Aisha Aguined is watching at Angelico J. Medina Memorial School with co-teachers and our school principal division of Iligan City. Hello, so, Matt. Hello, hello, teachers hello, from teacher. Iligan. Thank you for that. And Nerissa Pilapil is also saying good afternoon. Anonymous attendee is asking you, sir, may I know the title of that book Oh, and the author? Thank yes, you. the title of the book is Mindset, The Mindset. New Psychology of Success. It okay. is by Carol S. Dweck, PhD, okay. uh, professor from the University of Stanford. Stanford. Oh. Thank you, sir. Alvin Soriano, I think taking a growth mindset implies a level of risk tolerance. One cannot take a new challenge and have the willingness to go through mistakes without taking risks as opposed to staying within one's comfort zone. Plus, of course, there's a need to invest resources for exploration. What do you think? Oh, I, I think I think in alignment with, with what you have said. Um, because right now, especially this in, the, in this day and age of our pandemic, I think who betted well actually earned well as well. So you remember the, the, the example that I mentioned earlier on about this DPO slash technology organization who acted very quickly, provided investment because they did, many, many people did not have 
a laptop or a computer at home and connectivity. So there is definitely an investment there. But did they recoup their investment? The answer is yes, because they package it as a new product that they sold and they earned from it. So having said that, there is a certain environment where growth mindset will really thrive. And it's not necessarily uh, how well, uh, a black and white because mm -hmm. even us would oscillate between growth and fix because it's it not necessarily, we cannot fix on, on growth mindset and fix on fixed mindset. Uh, it's a human tendency. And of course, uh, the businesses would have to act with a lot of prudence as well, especially if you're in a very conservative environment. Uh, so this, this, this theory would actually thrive more likely in, in a startup organization, in a technology organization. And, and by the way, that's a technology organization that I mentioned earlier. Mm, yeah. So uh, if you're in, in Silicon Valley, for example, and you're still in Apple, if you're still in Google, for example, I think those are the kinds of environment where they provide a certain margin uh, for mistakes. But the, 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 the key there is fail fast. Mm -hmm. And move forward. And I think that's the kind of culture that they have built. So you have to create that kind of culture where the growth mindset will also thrive and become more beneficial for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It reminds me of the book by John Maxwell, Failing Forward. You, you have fail it forward. You have to fail it forward. So every after a mistake, you learn, you grow, and you stand up, uh, well, a step up. Uh, Closer to your dreams. Correct. And, and not repeat the same mistake. Right? Not repeat the same mistake. Thank you, sir. Anonymous attendee. Oh, well, let's go for a live question via Zoom. Antonio Alvarado, sir. Please come in. Sir Antonio Alvarado, are you here now? Zoom live question. Okay, we're, while we're waiting for Sir Antonio Alvarado, can we proceed to the next question at the Q&A box, Sir Eric? Sure. How do you train yourself to have a growth mindset in this world where we always compare ourselves to those who are already successful? <laughs> oh, man, man, no, that is so true. That is a, a, a trap that is, uh, you know, the society has actually imposed upon us where we are pitted against each other. Um, and, and, you know, there are contests. That's why there are contests. We are uh, compared and measured as, as opposed to another person. Mm. At the very core of the growth mindset is actually your transformation. So this is a new theory, not necessarily new, but new way of actually measuring ourselves. So let me just go back to my stint in uh, Baker McKenzie Global Services in Manila. And, and right now, we don't have... Uh, a performance management where I, I give you a one, two, three, four, five rating. Mm. We, we are done with that. We don't do that anymore. We measure you based on your overall output and based on how you progressed from last year to this year. You are comparing yourself against yourself from a certain point in time. So remember, the fixed mindset is a snapshot of you at a certain point in time. And that defines you forever. Mm. Whereas a growth mindset, we can make use of that IQ test, for example, and then test you again later on. Are you still there or did you improve? Yeah. And that's actually the measurement of, of the growth mindset. And, you know, it's a pitfall uh, of comparing yourself against others. And, and that's what society has taught us. But I think the more humane way of measuring ourselves in terms of progress, is compare ourselves from our past version of ourselves. Thank you, Sir Eric. Anonymous attendee is asking, how do you motivate a staff who seems to have a fixed mindset and has been with the company for a long time already, more than 10 years? Oh, it, it's a very hard question. And definitely, it's a, I don't provide a very prescriptive answer to that because there are a lot of variables that might be permeating across that situation. but. But definitely, it's, it's about culture. It's about the way people manage him 
or her and the way mm -hmm. that you interact with him. So as mentioned earlier, a growth mindset begets a growth mindset. If everyone in this team is operating in that uh, platform or perspective and you operate as well in terms of your dealing with him. So I don't know how you are also talking with that person and are you focusing on his effort mm -hmm. rather, than, rather than his label uh, of himself? So perhaps if we continue on, and of course, we, we also have to put that growth mindset that we, we will say that this person will change because this is the way that we are also treating this person. Uh, so we are also not labeling this person as the end product. It's a yeah. journey. Thank you, Sir Eric. Uh, anonymous attendee, when anonymous attendee is asking you what is your advice for people who have been struggling to take failures as a learning experience. So, so again, it's 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 a lot of because it's mindset. It's how what society dictated upon us. Maybe it's also brought about by the way we're brought up. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why it's exciting, uh, even if it's not a new theory. Uh, my, the mindset theory is not new because it's 25 years already. Yeah. Uh, but still, there's a struggle in applying it because society actually has a different frame of mind and frame of measuring ourselves. And, and that, that's why more and more people, if you and more and more people would read, more and more people would practice, it will hopefully become more and more a norm and a more and more part of our culture, especially in the, in the HR community. Um, so it's a personal transformation. And if more people would transform, it would hopefully be a cultural transformation. I agree with you, Sir Eric. And if I may, I believe we can trace this back to the time of Adam and Eve, when Cain and Abel would offer their burnt offerings to God, and God would only, would only favor that of Abel, and Cain would feel like a failure, and it, it brought out the worst in him. I mean, maybe that is a, a, real, a real story, or this could have been uh, well thought of Moses, but it happened, and it's still happening now, 2020, that siblings are in rivalry, that if the brother, the older brother is a success, the younger brother is pressured to be a success as well. And if not, they would be deemed as failures. So I like that you're, you're bringing up labels as one of the culprits and one of the reasons why people seem to be too hard on themselves. Fredemina Fermin, how do you encourage tenured employees to take a risk and move out of their comfort zone? <laughs> so it's a, a lot of questions how well I think is all about uh, not just mindset because mindset is a personal uh, transformation. It's mm. really, I think it's a more of a cultural uh, transformation and cultural transformation from an organizational perspective. Mm -hmm. And leadership has a great part in transforming the culture. So first, I think if there is a growth mindset, maybe as part of your leadership program, mm -hmm. if you believe it, if you can influence it, uh, if you can socialize this with those deciding uh, managers or what, what kind of program your leadership development would have. And even as, uh, as, a, as a general course in your overall curriculum, I think awareness would pave the way to uh, hopefully eventual transformation because if people don't know this, then how could they apply? Again, belief, action, growth. Yes. So again, bag. Bag. that's a bag. We can, we can start with e-education, e-bagmo. <laughs> I, I guess there's, a, I, I believe a lot in education and I'm happy that many uh, teachers are participating in this session because I think education, whether that is in school or in a corporate setup, would really be essential in the transformation of our society. And shout out to the public school teachers. Well. Because I also am a product of public school, elementary and high school. I, I am a product of of a public school, elementary mm -hmm. and, and college. Yeah, yeah. Me, elementary and high school. Okay, Cromwell Maestrado for uh, the live Zoom question, sir. Sir Cromwell, welcome back. Hello, sir Cromwell. I like the car, by the way. The? 
the car. Yeah, so those, hello, hello, sir. sir. Cromwell. Hello, sir Cromwell. Welcome back. We I, love the I, car. I so. It's good to see you again. Yeah. You're, I see that he's still practicing his. Uh, we love your car. We love your car. <laughs> just, just a prop, though. Mm. Yeah. Question, sir Cromwell. Yes, sir Harwell. Well, talking about education, I, I think well, I have overheard earlier about the new normal or the next normal for education, which is transformational uh, growth mindset. And I, I believe that part of growth mindset is the emergence of agile learning. Uh, I think everybody's familiar with agile learning, which is uh, totally different from learning agility though. So in this generation, how can institutions or organizations adopt uh, agile learning and also become a great impact for transformational change throughout the organization in general. Thank you, Sir Cromwell, for the question, Sir Eric. Uh, thanks, Cromwell. Um, I might not have the monopoly of truth or answer to this <laughs> because I think it's really beyond, uh, beyond the overall discussion that we have had. But if I may just offer my own uh, perspective into this, as, uh, as, as you can see, Howell, the days of face-to-face -face learning has actually been tested now. Mm -hmm. And we have minimized actually the face-to-face -face learning and all of the platforms that will make ourselves more agile in terms of delivering learning is being, being tested right now. So in fact, this, this platform of, web, of a webinar is an example of agile learning. Uh, you can actually participate by just using your own mobile <laughs> phone, mm -hmm. for example, right? Even when you're in bed or yes. with, even if you're in, in the comfort room, for example. So yes. it, it, it's give you the, it gives you the ability of somehow on demand when you need it, where you would want to see it. And it's great that we're recording this uh, in YouTube, in Learn, uh, in, mm. in LinkedIn, and even in Facebook, uh, so you can backtrack the recording <laughs> and revisit if necessary. So, so I guess at this day and age, this has really accelerated uh, our need for more agile, more mobile, more in-demand learning, where where curriculum is actually customized on a per-person basis based on his own pace and based yeah. on his own timing. So there is, there is the, there, there is a silver lining in this pandemic that it actually tested us to explore possibilities from a learning perspective. So Cromwell, I think this, this COVID actually brought us closer to where we want to be in terms of agile learning. That, that's right, exactly correct, sir. And of course, we're hoping forward that with the next normal, we say, we can adopt the agile learning methods and uh, of course the virtual, the virtual platforms that we are uh, using nowadays. Um, hopefully it's, it's sustainable uh, in the near future. And of course it's consistently being used by, by practitioners like us and uh, all other institutions involved as well. Uh, we just have a quick, another quick question regarding agile still. Um, so part of transformational leadership is agile leadership. Do you have any thoughts about agile leadership? So I, I guess the agile leadership is also uh, a Ken Blanchard situation leadership uh, 2.0, mm -hmm. 2 right? Yeah. So we're, we're going back to it, maybe packaged in a different way, maybe also because of technology or platform. It only goes to show that there is a lot of agility that is needed from mm -hmm. our leaders right now, a lot of malleability, so to speak, and which is great and very much attuned to our topic because we don't, we don't label a certain leader and we don't box a certain leader. And right now, what we celebrate is a growth, mind, uh, growth mindset leader who is agile capable of transforming personally and capable of bringing that transformation to the organization. So I guess, you know, both, uh, both Cromwell and I were on the same page in terms of, you know, growth mindset, 
would actually be a contributory to what we want our leaders to be, which is an agile leader. Thank you so much, sir. That's, that's great. That's uh, awesome. Thank you for your thoughts about it. My, I appreciate it. My pleasure. And thank you for asking your question again live via the Zoom room. Thank you, sir. Cromwell, Maestrado. Thank you, thank you sir. Howell. Bye-bye. Thanks, Cromwell. So, so Howell, that, that's also a demonstration of a growth mindset, not being shy from, you know, expressing your thoughts. He has always been the best in recitation. <laughs> Sir Cromwell, yeah, one of one of the since April, since consistently uh, raising hand and uh, asking questions. So we thank you for that. Uh, from YouTube, Ryan Pons, hi, good afternoon. Question: How do you develop a growth mindset, and how do you relate it to grit? Thank you. Oh, I don't know whether that's uh, that's uh, <laughs> that. So what's the, what's the name again of the person? Ryan, Ryan Pons. Yeah, I, I could have probably asked him to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> because as, as, it's, it's great because the next book perhaps that I would like you to read is from, uh, uh, from Good to Great by Jim Collins. But also there is a book by our very own Jonathan Yabut, right? Uh, who is from, from Grit to Great, right? Mm. Because it's, it's all about... It, it's it, the framework is aligned in terms of you becoming a better version because of the effort that you put in and by the sheer perseverance and determination that you also put in. So there's a lot of parallelism in terms of this theory. Um, and there is also a need for us to be more dynamic and more, uh, but because it's self-feeding. When you believe that there is potential to improve you, the more tendency that you'll act and action becomes growth. And growth also, in a way, feeds your belief of the other possibilities of what could be. So it's a virtuous cycle from belief, action, to growth, to belief again. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that actually is perpetrating and becomes a great grit cycle because it feeds on its own and becomes more beneficial and you become better and better because of your grit. But, but then again, nothing could be had if there is no action. So you just mm -hmm. have to follow belief, action, growth, where growth actually contributes again to your belief. Thank you, Sir Eric. From Fredemina Fermin, how do you encourage standard employees to take a risk and move out of their comfort zone? Right. I think we discussed that uh, oh, how well back, uh, yes. Anonymous attendee. Sir Eric, can you recommend books to read? I've read The Secrets and it's somewhat similar to the mindset discussion or the book The Secret. Right. So um, what I would personally would like you to look into is, again, aside from uh, the book of Carol Dweck, I would like you to read Start With Why. I'm um, sorry, with why? Simon Sinek, yes. By Simon Sinek, because I, I think this, this time provides us an opportunity to reflect, uh, not only from a corporate perspective, but also in a personal perspective. What is my personal why? What is my purpose and what is my mission? Am I still on the right track or do I need to recalibrate myself? So again, it's, it's, it's symbiotic because the growth mindset gives you the opportunity to reflect because you want to focus on your effort. What's my next step and how do I become better? Uh, but with that, you also reflect on, is this the right path? Am I made for this? Is this my purpose? So I guess let's make the most of this time by looking inwards, tune in, so that we can better move forward. All right. From... Uh... Um, and I'm sorry, and, and I apologize. I would also like to, uh, aside from mindset and start with why, at least for mm -hmm. now, another good book, which is the best selling book of all time. And if you have time, please do read the Bible because it does provide a lot of personal and even professional wisdom that we can use at any point in time. Thank you, Sir Eric. And if I may add, before uh, Simon Sinek's uh, Start With Why, there was Rick Warren's uh, Purpose Driven Life. Perfect. That's Perfect. also yeah. about why. Why do I yeah. do this? Why am I serving? The why. 
Mary right. Ann Hoson, how do you position the right mindset during these pandemic situations? How do we position? I, I guess it's um, what the people would need right now is a lot of compassion, mm -hmm. a lot of generosity, and a lot of kindness. Um, and I think, you know, because that is what, where the need is, what, what kind of mindset would supply that need? Would it be the fixed mindset or would it be the growth mindset? And I think it's, 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 it's great that we'll be able to leverage this situation through the growth mindset, which can actually bring about greater compassion for the self, for others, generosity in terms of time, being there for each other, and also a lot of goodness. Uh, this, that is what we need. So basically more than ayuda of the government, yeah. more than relief goods, there is a lot of need for support that, hey, Howell, I'm thinking of you during this time. Yeah. I hope you are, you are well. And oh, sure. you know, Howell, that I am here just you know, give me a text. If, if there's anything I can do, I can just listen uh, to you and uh, hopefully we can move forward better in this situation. I think that's the great positioning and leveraging the current need, the need to belong, the need to be supported, the need to be cared for, and that could be had through the growth mindset and not through the fixed mindset, definitely. Wonderful. Now, sir, for, wow, it's 4.30 already. Can you still accommodate just a question? Maybe one more and okay, we'll, sir. we'll wrap things up. I know Anonym, it's okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Anonymous attendee, thank you, Mr. Eric, for an hour of very inspiring forum. Mine is not a question. It's unfortunate that our government cannot see that seniors who are still able-bodied people are not allowed to expound the challenges of this new normal by limiting them, by just staying at home where they cannot share whatever growth mindset they have versus the fixed mindset of yesterday years. So, Sir Eric, what's your opinion on the sentiment of our anonymous attendee who happens to be a senior citizen who airs out the very sentiment of, of a lot of Filipino senior citizens right now? We, we can be very productive um, because... Wherever we are, uh, I know there are restrictions and it's unfortunate. And some also able-bodied and very energetic young people, um, below yeah. 21, of course, mm -hmm. are also not given the opportunity and the privilege to go out. Uh, but having said that, that is where we have to operate because that's where our government believes where we should be and we should be respectful. But regardless of where we are, the adoption of growth mindset uh, is agnostic of your location, is agnostic of your age. And even if you're confined into your own premises, growth mindset can bring about a lot of discovery and a lot of opportunity. Um, so for example, uh, Thomas Alba Edison, aside from, aside from the time that he went out to fly his kite and <laughs> do the, uh, the theory of electricity, mm -hmm. He is actually confined for most part of years inside his house, trying to develop thousands and thousands of bulbs mm -hmm. until he is able to find the right incandescent bulb. Mm -hmm. So I know that these are trying times and I, this could be very confining, but as long as you wear your growth mindset, I think you can be impactful and you can still prove your contribution and worth to society and much like Albert Einstein, Thomas Alva Edison, and all of our senior people who've actually contributed to the transformation of society and transformation of history. Thank you for the encouraging words that, of wisdom, Sir Eric Riego de Dios. And we call the last minute the takeaway. Well, we have learned so much from you over the first an hour, first hour and a half of Q&A and, uh, of course, lecture. If there's one thing you'd like us to ponder on before we go to sleep tonight, what will that be? Ponder on how am I become a better version of myself starting tomorrow. But 
start with your self-compassion because you cannot transform and change if you don't express your love for yourself. So tonight, give yourself some hug, mm -hmm. give yourself some love, mm -hmm. be grateful, pray a gratitude prayer to, uh, for those of us who believe. It's always inspiring and recharging to be grateful. It, it fuels happiness for us. And that actually fuels, when, when you feel that you are secure, that you are loved, then the more inspired you are to go out and venture into the world, even if you're still in the confines of your home, <laughs> and become more impactful to your, to your neighbors and to your family members even. So how change a life one day at a time and start to change yourself because wow. that's within your immediate control. And that's the silver lining for all of us who are confined right now. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Eric Riego de Dios. Wonderful. I, I love your, your the, the, the thoughts to ponder on. You know, Self-compassion, self-love. I love that. Philippines! Thank you, Sir Eric. And I uh, hope we can connect with you again soon and see you face to face and share the center stage live with thousands of our, our audience at the SMX Convention. God willing in due course. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Stay safe. You too, Sir Eric. Thank you so much. Everybody put your yes. hands together Bye. for Sir Eric. And as he fades out of the screen, fades in Miss Irish Malonda Samson. What can you say, Miss Irish? Thank you, Raul. Hello. That was a great session. That was Every. very insightful, full of heart. Great presentation, Sir Eric. Rego de Dios. Thank you so much. And you know, Sir Howell, he never fails to say yes whenever we invite him for a session. Thank you all for always supporting Arriba Academy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, guys, please um, type in your learnings, your takeaways, share with us your um, learnings so that we can share it to our viewers as well. Okay, Sir Hawa? So, firstly, I'd like to thank Sir Eric Riego de Dios for giving us a glimpse, a beautiful glimpse of, of transforming ourselves through growth mindset. Because one hour is never enough. An eight-hour session with him will never be enough. But what I appreciate, my takeaway, my very takeaway was how he has really transformed himself from a boy in the Botas, educated by the, the state-run, well, state, state schools, and going in and becoming the successful person that he is, internationally recognized. Well, I mean well decorated and awarded and yet remaining to be humble and that's the most beautiful thing that can happen to a person to grow and remain humble even after a lot of success has been experienced by such professional i agree sir howell so before i share my takeaway let me read first uh, the sharing from alan guda growing is ageless and does not require age. That's his takeaway. Thank you so I, much. I love that too. Okay, mine is, well, this aligns with our tagline, of course, the Arriva Academy's tagline. It's all about being better. Yes. So continuous learning, continuous development. And, of course, um, sharing is about having a growth mindset. Um, this is really, well, upon realization, this is very beneficial nowadays this will be a great tool for every one of us in coping with the challenges in this in this pandemic especially um having grit and heart uh to transform and adapt to change and not to, not to be afraid in taking uh, the risk is really vital nowadays sir i agree i agree with you beautiful learning is irish Thank you so much, Sir Howell. And of course, thank you as well for moderating our session today. I'm always honored. That it's always a pleasure. Thank and I'll so be seeing you next week. See you next week. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, Sir Howell. 
Okay, so this is not yet the end of our e-learning session. I would like to acknowledge some of our following WinMIT partners. Our official media partner, Art Plus Magazine. Thank you. Focus Media. Globotronics. City Advertising Ventures. Outcome. Elevate Media. Major sponsor, Pacific Cross Philippines. For win-win partners, thank you as well to Brother, Faber Castell, Gluta C, Moringa O2, KFC, Mr. Donut, Tokyo Tokyo, Lotus Biscop, Boss Job, Sir Technology Inc., Finma Properties, Salary Jet, Ilawi Korea, Kitosan and Carpo Consulting, Enchanted Kingdom, Disperse. Thank you to Cosmotech Philippines Inc. Manchum's virtual preschool program. To register, please call them at 0906-486-0710 or email them at disakanabe at mindchums.org. If you want to place your ads here, advertise your company, your logo, your services, have a brand exposure to thousands of viewers to FB, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Zoom, please email us at marketing at .ph. To stay on top of our insights and updates, stay connected on our vi and visit us on our social media channels. Please join the Arriva Academy Facebook group, like the Arriva Academy Facebook fan page, follow the Arriva Academy LinkedIn page, and visit us on our website. It's www.ariva.com.ph. And if you want to watch again the replay of our e-learning session with Sir Eric, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's Arriva Academy and Arriva Talks. Again, it's Arriva Academy and Arriva Talks. For our upcoming online learning sessions, we would like again to invite you to register to our HR Virtual Summit PH Bounce Back HR. This is a live webinar series for our cause and we have invited international and local subject matter experts to share with us their wisdom in the HR field. We would like to invite you, please register. This will be on June 9, 3 to 4.30 p.m. This is a live webinar series for our cause and we have invited Coach May Soriano to discuss the session Coach with Acts. Don't forget, Tuesday, June 9. Another live webinar series for our cause, How to Connect with Clarity and Confidence, Building Community in Times of Uncertainty and Isolation. This will be discussed by Coach Carrie Phipps from Australia, June 10. Don't forget. An e-learning masterclass from none other than Mr. Jonathan Yabut, How to Manage the Millennials in the Workplace. This will be on Tuesday. June 16, don't forget, 4 to 6 p.m. This is only 799 per participant, and you will be getting one free ebook worth 249 pesos. Another e learning masterclass from Mr. Jonathan Yabut Work Smart, Not Just Hard How to Boost Your Productivity at Work. This will be on Wednesday, June 17, same time, 4 to 6 p.m., 799 per participant, plus one free ebook. Another e-learning masterclass, Prospecting, Cold Calling, Telephone Sales, and Closing the Deal. This will be discussed by Mr. Chris Randall, and this will be on Thursday. Don't forget, June 18, June 18, 3 to 5 p.m. Second batch of online selling from home, how to use FB, IG, and LinkedIn for your business. Guys, this is very timely, so... Please join us on June 24, 4 to 6 p.m., 799 per participant. Another e-learning masterclass, Crisis Management Strategies in Sales. Ultimate winning sales strategies during a crisis and beyond. This will be discussed by Mr. Coach, uh, for, by Coach MJ Tallon from USA, and this will be on Thursday, June 25. Don't forget to register. And if you want to customize an e-learning session for your team, for your company, please do reach me at 0916-695-4418 or you can email me at irish.arivaacademy at gmail.com. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Hope to see you again next week for another live webinar series for a cause. 
Again, this is Irish Malanda Samson in Arriba. It's all about being better. Be safe. Have a great weekend, guys. Thank you.